The Academy Award nominations are officially out. A few snubs and a few surprises. There there were snubs in the film soundtrack category. Most notably was Radiohead's Johnny Greenwood and, of course, John Hurwitz's work on First Man, criminally overlooked on both counts. But this got me thinking about the complex world of movie soundtracks and the creative process of any music that we just don't get to see. And have you ever wondered what goes on behind the scenes? And if you have, would you dare take a peek behind the curtain? So Scott Fryman, he, he is the co-founder and CEO of Wyatt SAS Firm, founded by production music veterans, all with the goal of simplifying how music supervisors, editors, composers and administrators all handle the business of getting music synced to pictures. And QY suite of products are designed to cover the entire life cycle of, of music post-production to help eliminate the headaches of data scattered across multiple spreadsheets, stacks of paper and software applications. And after the interview, he also told me that you wouldn't believe how many famous movie and TV studios are dealing with ineligible handwriting on scraps of paper. I think it's a fascinating story and a real eye-opener and perfectly timed with what everyone's talking about at the moment with the Academy Awards coming up. So I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did, but let's get him on. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Los Angeles so we can speak with Scott Fryman from QY. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Scott. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yes, my name is Scott Fryman. I am CEO of a company called Choir, which uh, develops uh, cloud-based music solutions for everyone involved with music for media. Now, from doing a little bit of research, I quickly learned that Choir is a SaaS firm founded by production music veterans that simplify how music supervisors, editors, composers and administrators handle the business of getting music synced but to pictures. I mean, can, can you tell me a little bit more about the story behind Choir and the kind of problems that you encountered and what made you want to set out on this journey to solve them? Sure. Well, when you work uh, in film or TV or any other uh, form of media and you're working with music, uh, you often are dealing with lots of different people. There are the people who are writing original music. There are people who are licensing the music uh, and going through the process of researching music rights and negotiating rates with multiple parties. There are the people who actually have the music who want to license it. There are people who need to edit this all together and sync it to picture. There are people who need to report it to um, agencies and performance rights organizations like ASCAP and uh, BMI, PRS. And you find out that all of these people tend to be working in their own environments with their own spreadsheets and file cabinets full of paper and that the same data is getting entered over and over again. And our original thought when we formed Choir was how do we make it so that the first person who enters the data, the one who really needs that piece of information, how can we make it so that that data flows through the chain and everyone else can benefit from that and cut out a lot of the data entry, cut out, uh, make everything run much more efficiently, uh, cut costs, help improve uh, the fact, um, help improve get people getting paid for their music and so forth. And so that's what we've been doing uh, with choir, and we have a, a pretty broad vision to uh, to tackle this in across all different verticals in the media space. Now, I also read that choir suite of products are designed to cover the entire life cycle of post of music post production to essentially help eliminate the headaches of data that's scattered across multiple spreadsheets, scats of paper, and software applications. But I've got to ask: Is it really true that soundtracks to the shows and films that we all love and everyone listening love? have a secret that they're often born out of stacks of paper, uh, overwhelming desks dotted in post-its. Is that true? Yes, it's absolutely true. Uh, obviously, music is getting on TV and getting in films. So it's not like uh, we're not able to do the work. But the way we're doing it, the way people are, are working today, is very, very cumbersome. Uh, for example, if you take a song like a Bruno Mars song, like Uptown Funk, there are 10-plus different publishers, there's a person who owns, uh, the company that owns the master recording, there are writers who are supposed to get royalties paid. So trying to track down all those parties, trying to negotiate who has the right to license this song, 
what are the fees, what are the splits, um, how am I going to use the song, and be tracking that while you're also tracking three or four or ten different other choices for that same scene in the movie. Um, the way people are traditionally doing that today, a lot of spreadsheets or Google Docs and a lot of paper because there's le- there are letters that go to the uh, to the holder of the master, for example, the record label. Then there's a letter that comes back from the record label. Then there's a confirmation back that I got your letter and I agree to the price. Then there's a letter that says I'm actually going to use the song now. And all of these pieces of paper are stored in someone's manila folder. So if you're not at your desk, if you're not there with the, the paper, you can't get access to it. And anyone else in the chain who's trying to get budgets together, um, people further up the chain in the studio, um, are reliant now on those people who have those spreadsheets and those paper files to funnel up the information. So it's a, it's a process that is working today, but working incredibly inefficiently. And for many people listening, they'll be blissfully unaware that their favorite soundtrack is actually part of a $4 billion a year industry with more than 2 million musical works licensed annually. But can you set the scene a little and help the listeners understand how the whole process works? Well, it's, it's, um, music rights are very, very complex. And depending on what country you're in, um, where the writer and the publisher and the record label are located, um, whether this is airing on TV or in a movie theater or in a video game, the rights um, and who gets paid are different. But in general, you're paying a right to the person who owns the recording of the song. You're paying, you're paying a fee to the people who own the publishing of the song, the right to let you use that song um, in what's called sync, meaning against picture. And then you're ultimately paying royalties to the people who wrote the music and again to the publishers. And so in order to complete a transaction to put music in a TV show or in a film, you have to identify all those parties. You have to find out what percentage ownership they have. Where do I mail the checks um, and all of that? And so there are all these different people and that dollar, those dollars add up quite a bit. 